Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, come on, somebody. Praise the Lord, everybody. God is a good God. He brought us through another week, amen. And we are so glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning, amen. All right, let us go before the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much in advance for being our daddy. We thank you, Lord God, for bringing us through another week, Father. We ask now that you will bless our service. Be with everyone under the sound of my voice, Father. Meet us right where we stand, Father God. Lord, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, let us read our affirmation of faith, which is found in Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is with thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that a man is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. All right. John 3, verses 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, 
but that the world through him might be saved. Come on, somebody. Let's put our hands together for Jesus, for the blood of the Lamb. We are so thankful for who God is. Amen. All right. Good morning, church. Do we have any visitors visiting for the first time? If so, can you please stand up and introduce yourselves? Well, welcome to the church. You're our family now. Going into this week, I want you to think about this quote. God is like oxygen. We sure can't see him, but we surely cannot live without him. Amen. 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 God is like oxygen. We sure can't see him, but we definitely can feel him. What do you say? Amen. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everybody. God is good. All the time, we serve a good God. Indeed, God has been extremely grateful to every single one of us that we're all gathered here again. You know, some of our folks might be traveling, but regardless, we are here just to praise and worship our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So if you don't want to praise him, I'll do it all by myself. Amen. Because God has been good to me. He woke me up. He brought me through 40 hours from California. Drove 40 hours all the way here to Indiana. I thought I couldn't do it but God. Hallelujah. Had it not been for God, I'm grateful this morning just to be here. I just want to bring a few things to our attention today as we continue on and as we move into, as we move our church. And I'm just so thankful, first of all, in our announcement this morning. I'm just extremely thankful. I think I have some graphics here, if we can put it up on the screen. I'm just so thankful. I want to thank the Lord for bringing me and my family here safely, right? And I am grateful for that travel, the travel to Indiana, that scenic drive from California. As we were driving from state to state, I say, honey, you better start kissing California goodbye. Just leave the graphic on the screen. But I'm extremely thankful today for what God is doing. Amen. And I want you all to know that as we are all here, we are here to grow together, we are here to pray with one another. We are here to encourage one another. We are here to build up with one another. We are here to weep with one another. And we are here to laugh and have fun with one another. What do you say? Amen. I pray that you get to know me as your pastor. Uh, I know this is a new journey for all of you, and I salute Pastor Logan, and I'll let you know a little thing about him later in our announcement, but I salute him and his wife for their tenureship of how they led this church for over 31 years. Come on and put your hands together. <laughs> Grateful for that. Could you go to the next slide? But as you go, as you move forward, I want you to know that I'm here to serve you. And in whichever capacity that you would like your, to, your pastor, you can reach out and reach your pastor. This is your pastor's telephone number, and that's my email address. And I want you to write it down. I want you to have it in your phones. Some of you have already called you, and you don't answer your phone because you thought it was a, a scammer calling you. All right? Ah, you are sick and I try to reach out and none of you answered. But just so you know, please put my telephone number in your phone and please save it in your phone that you know your pastor is calling you. Amen. 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 And that's my email address. So if you want to talk to me through email, my email address is right there. You can reach me as well. 
All right, let's go to our next slide. Uh, next week, um, our conference will be having our conference session next week. And uh, we will be having sending up nine delegates that will be representing the Hallville Church. All right, going to ask our church clerk to come forward and she's going to read the names of those individuals that will be serving at our conference, uh, conference session that is going to be held next week, Sunday. It's going to be at, uh, I think it's going to be at the Paramere um, Church in Barron Springs, Michigan. All right, so our church clerk is going to read the names for us briefly. And then after that, I have something else that I want to share. Good morning. The following names are Penny Johnson, Eleanor Sapp, Tequila Welch, Gloria Ely Futch, Linda Hobbs, Jeffrey Strover, Deborah Strover, Tamisha Allen, Barbara Clark. And the alternates were Karen Travell and Jeffrey Ford. Thank you. All right, so all those who heard their names, I'd like to meet with you briefly right after church, right up front here. I want to meet with you briefly right after church, and we are just going to lay out a few things to you, and then we're going to move forward. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, let's move on to our next graphics. I don't know for those who know that um, before I got here at my former church, we usually have a prayer line that we do every single morning at 6 a.m. California time, which is 9 a.m. here in the East Coast, on the East Coast, right? Our prayer line, however, since we want to do our prayer line, we would like to encourage you all to join with us every morning. For those I know at 9 o'clock, you're at work, you're just pushing out, get distracted with a lot of stuff. But we are praying together on our prayer line. Right? And every single morning from Monday through Fridays, we are on our prayer line. It's called Morning Sunrise. Right? And we have folks from all over, from and the, my former church and our church. We're going to combine together, and we're still going to be praying together. What do you say? I believe in the power of prayer. Amen? I believe in the power of prayer, and I would like today, anyone that would like to meet with me at 2 o'clock today to be a part of our church prayer team, I'd like to put present, present a prayer team for our church because there are many things that we want to do, but expect the devil to be on the attack. Amen. God is, God is going to do great and mighty things. And we're studying that this week in our Sabbath school lesson. But the devil is going to be on the attack. And I just want a few individuals or whoever would like to join with me in praying. Praying for our church. Praying for our ministry. I would like you to meet me today at 2 o'clock right here in the church. 2 o'clock. Just meet me right up front. We're going to be talking together and we're going to be laying out a few things of what we're going to be doing together in order to build and to move this ministry forward. Amen? But we need praying individuals. So you can write this down. You can also find it on our Facebook page where you can get this flyer and you see it there and you can join us. You may be at work and you want to listen in. You can listen in. However, this week I am taking a break from the prayer line. So there's no prayer line this week because I need to finish packing, right? Last week I did it and we did it all throughout our driving up here from California. And it was beautiful. But I need to spend a little time getting my little equipment up and moving. And so this week I'm taking a break from the prayer line. So there's no prayer line this week. But starting back on July 18th. On Monday, July 18th, which is next week, Monday, we are going to be having our prayer line, okay? So I want for us all to, to, to take a picture. You can find this flyer on our Facebook page, and you can share it with your friends, your neighbors, whoever, and let us come together, and we pray together. The church that prays together stays together. 
Amen. Let's move to our next slide. Next week's Sabbath, I want to have what is called ice cream chat and chill. All right, so we're going to have our ice cream chat and chill with all of our young people, all our kids. I want all our kids to be here next week. But if, you're, if you find yourself between the ages of 9 through 21, I would like to meet with all of our young people, myself and our first lady. We're going to be here and we're going to have ice cream chat and chill. We don't want the parents here. You can sit in the church while the kids are talking with us but we want to spend some time and bond with all our kids so we want all our kids to be here next week sabbath all right all our young people between the ages of 9 through 21 we want you all here next week because we're going to have ice cream chat and chill and we're going to have a wonderful time together what do you say amen and then moving forward to our next slide on June, July 30th. What date did I say? July 30th. We're going to be having a very important town hall in person meeting where I will be laying out my vision for ministry, my goals for our church, and I want to hear from you all. Amen. So I would like everybody to mark your calendars, put it on your calendars, make sure that you don't forget because I would like to meet with the entire church body. So we're going to be meeting on July 30th at 6 p.m. right here in our church. I want you to plan to be here. So I know many of you party after church. Thus, thus, thus put it in your calendar that you have a special meeting that Saturday evening right here with the pastor. Amen. And I know those who are partying, I see it on Facebook. So I want to see you all here next week. Amen. Amen. Just messing with you all. All right, so let's move on. Next week's Sabbath, I'm starting a series, a sermon series here next week's Sabbath, and it's dubbed Facing the Giants. Whether you think about it or not, we all have giants in our lives. Mm -hmm. And how can we face those giants? Come next week. We want to bring everyone out, and we're going to lift up Jesus next week's Sabbath. It's going to be a three-part sermon series. We'll be looking on Facing the Giants. Facing Facing the giants. Whatever those giants are, they must fall. They must fall in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So next week's Sabbath, we're going to be looking on that sermon series entitled Facing the Giants. So I want you all to plan to be here next week's Sabbath. As we move on, just one for us to know. All those who may have celebrated a birthday this week or an anniversary, we want you all just to stand for a moment. Amen. All right. Amen. 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 Well, I tell people that July is the best month of the year. Hallelujah. We thank God for the seventh month of the year. Uh, and uh, July is the seventh number, which is the perfect number, which God loves the, the number seven. Amen. So we, we lift up the month of July and we are grateful for all those who are celebrating their birthday today. I believe that the, the Dominics uh, have a special announcement right now. And then after, we're going to sing happy birthday to all of our celebrants. And uh, we're going to move forward with our worship service. Come on, brother and sister Dominic, as they announce. Good morning, everyone, Good morning. and happy Sabbath. happy Sabbath. Everybody doing all right today? Yes, excellent, excellent. Well, um, I was hoping to have it on the screen, but we don't. But we are having a birthday party tomorrow. Our son here, CJ. CJ, won't you please stand? Yeah. Uh, so CJ will be a teenager tomorrow. CJ will be 13. So we are having a party. And our pastor celebrated his birthday on Thursday. So we're going to have a double portion tomorrow. We're going to celebrate CJ and we're going to celebrate the pastor at the same time. So if you look on the screen, 
you can take a screenshot of it so you have the address and the time. Everyone here is invited. If you have your friends, neighbor that you want to bring with you, that's fine. All right. So don't use that as an excuse. Whoever you want to bring with you, that's fine. We'll have enough food, enough time. It's a fellow. It's an opportunity to fellowship. Okay. We having dinner here today. Try to sit next to someone you don't know. Get their name. Get their phone number. Check on them during the week. We had a dinner at the house a couple weeks ago, and we had a wonderful time. You know, I, I got to meet some new people, learn some stuff about them, learn some people in our church of firecrackers. You wouldn't know that just sitting here on Saturday morning. So get to know somebody. And then tomorrow, you can finish that off. You can take it further, you know, come into the party. For those who are watching us online, the address is 8270 Cloverdale Way, Indianapolis. And it's at 2 p.m. tomorrow. So, you know, I figure we'll give you guys some time, you know, but for whatever you're doing in the morning, 2 p.m. I, I felt was a good time. Plus, we have some people who go to church on Sunday. So that would also give them time to get out of church and come and fellowship with us. Thanks again. Thank you. That's surprising. Didn't know a party was being planned, but all right. But it's good to know that. So tomorrow we're going to have a wonderful time together, having some fun together. All of our visitors, any visitors visiting with us today? Huh? Oh, we have my dear sister here. What's your name, my dear? You look so beautiful in your red, with your glasses popped on your head. Sister Joyner? All right, beautiful. It's good to see you. Welcome to our church. I see another sister here. What's your name? All right, Angela. All right, it's good to have you. Welcome to our church. We are glad and we are happy to have you. Is there a little fellowship song you usually sing? Huh? Let's sing that fellowship song as we walk around and give each other boom fists. Uh, boom fists. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So easy, so easy to love. Good to see you. That was fun. Amen. Get our bo bloods boiling. Let's do happy birthday to all our celebrants right now. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, dear celebrants. Happy birthday to you. 
Amen. Just before I do take our seat, there are two other things that I would like to do. First, this is our first time of we having the entire Francis family with us today. And I know many of you don't know, you've only met Samantha and my wife, but we have DJ. DJ is autistic, all right? So you'll see, if you sing a certain song, DJ listens to a lot of gospel music. And he expresses that by shouting or screaming and running around the church. So I hope we... I hope we can be a little patient with DJ in understanding DJ. And we have Lily's mom, which I call Mama. Mama, stand for a moment. All right, that's Mama. And we, we have Papa. Now, 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 Papa came on Thursday, and he was so eager to come to the church. And if you notice, the lawn is cut outside. Amen. Papa came and he went straight to work. Amen. So we're grateful for Papa. And as you know, beautiful Samantha, Sister Samantha, she says she wants to be a model. So let's pray for her. <laughs> And you have my, you have my beautiful wife, Sister Lilibeth. All right. Amen. Amen. Church, we got a little news while I was in Sabbath school that Pastor Logan was rushed to the hospital today. Nothing for us to be too alarmed about, but his wife wants to make sure that he's doing all right. So the, uh, she did express that they're open for visitors. Um, so today, as much as possible, some of you can drop by and send a text or a prayer. But right now, I just want for us just to pause. And we're going to have a prayer for Pastor Logan at this time. Kind Heavenly Father, we are extremely happy we're grateful, dear Jesus, for how you've been leading this church. We're thankful, dear God, for the leadership of Pastor Logan. For 31 years, he stood in this church, and he led this church with everything that he had. Now, dear God, he is at a very somber stage in his life. And I pray, dear Jesus, that in every moment while he's there at the hospital, that you will be with him and you will be with the doctors and help him to feel better again. We love him and we can't wait to see him again in church, worshiping because God, if he wasn't sick, he would have been here right now. So Father, I pray, dear Jesus, that your omnipotent hand will be with Pastor Logan right now, we pray. In Jesus' name, let every church member say, Amen and amen. May God bless us as we continue to worship him today. Can I have my friends to come down front, please? Church, they need to hear you singing. Adults, remember to wave high so that they can see you.
we can start making our way back to the front. have a question for you guys. On your birthday, what do you like to get? On your birthday or Christmas, what do you, tell me a type of toy you like to get. Uh, I like to get Roblox on Roblox. Oh, okay. New age, new age. Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. What else? Um, adults, what were some toys that your kids like? Tell me some toys they like on their birthday. Barbie dolls? Money? Toys? No, they didn't. On their birthday? All right. Question for you. Does anybody know what this is? Is this, is this just a teddy bear? What is this? Say that again. How much does a build a bear cost? Too much. How much? And if you press this build a bear, I mean, this build a bear says. You, where is it? Um, it's at my house. Where? Um, on my bed. I snuggle it. Snuggle with it. Oh, that's so great. You snuggle with it at night. Who knows what this is? This is Elmo. Elmo is considered one of those watch me toys. Does anybody know what a watch me toy is? Do you still play with your Elmo? I don't have an Elmo toy anymore. Anymore? But did you have one? No. Did you have an Elmo? No. Did you have an Elmo? Yes. Do you play with Elmo anymore? No. Nope. Mm-mm. Elmo is considered a watch me toy. You know what that means? There are people who make a whole lot of money to make toys that they know kids are going to like for a short period of time. And those, like this bear, this is a, yeah, this bear, won't tell you how much this bear cost, but I asked a certain person where this bear was that's not even two months old, and she had to go dig for it. This is another watch me toy. They sp you spend all this money because of something that looks good and it's only for a little while. But look, you said something about these. These might not be, what are these? Legos. Does Legos ever go out of style? How many of you guys played with Legos when you were little? Did they look like this? You go in the store, and they're the same thing. What do you do with Legos? You, you build it. Um, you build stuff with it. You build stuff with it. What do you do? You can, like, make them talk. You can make them tall. You can do play with them like toys. You can do so much with Legos. And what I want you to think about is when you're building with Legos, what's this piece right here? What does this do? This piece. This is your base. So this is like your foundation, okay? And so I want you to remember something about Legos. Legos is like when you come to church and when you learn about Jesus. It might look different for some people, but you're still building a foundation that never goes out of style. So even though sometimes you might not like the way church service goes for you, but you're still learning something in Sabbath school, or you might want to go play with your friends, 
But guess what? Those friends might not be your friends next week. But guess what? Who's always going to be here? Jesus in this church and your foundation. So when you think about those watch me things and you want to go to those parties or play with those kids, remember that foundation that will never leave, okay? Let's pray. It's okay. My friends are being their age. They're one and two. It's okay. We have to be patient, church. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for waking us up another day, letting us to come experience the word of God. Please help other people who don't believe in God believe in God. Please help. Please pray for them. Amen. You may go back to your seat. It is our prayer time. And just before we pray today, I know many of us have had a rough and tiresome week, a challenging time. You may be going through something right now that you need God to come divinely close to you, to walk you through it. So as our praise team get ready to sing, and as they're singing, if you want to join me at the altar, as we're going to be kneeling in prayer, it might be new for you, but that's okay. Because I believe that when we pray, God can do something tremendous in our lives. So as our priest team sing right now, and if you're so, would like to join me as we kneel together, and as we pray together, God is going to do something miraculous in your life and in my life. I don't mind waiting on the Lord. Father in heaven, we come on this another Sabbath, presenting our lives totally at the feet of the cross. Father, we recognize, dear Jesus, that we're living in the closing days of earth history. Father, we recognize every single day that this world is not our home. We're just passing through. Father, we see, dear Jesus, every single day we're just fighting to make ends meet. Some of us are kneeling and bowing in this church right now, going through so much in their own lives, sickness in their bodies. They don't understand what is going on. Problems in the family. They don't understand why they're going through so much. Marriages are on the rocks and they can't figure out what's the problem. Children are growing wayward and more wayward each and every day. But God, right now we come at this time because we know that we serve a God who can heal the sin sick soul. 
So, Father, I pray, dear Jesus, that you will move in this congregation today. You will touch every heart. You will touch every individual. Let your people realize that there is still a bomb in Gilead. There is still a God that can heal. There is still a God that can restore. There is still a God, dear Jesus, that can touch and move the challenges in our lives today. Father, I present every member in this church. I present this church to you. Father, we have gone through a lot. We are still going through a lot. But Father, we know the church militant will be the church triumphant. So God, today I lift up the Orville Seventh-day Adventist Church. I pray, God, that your spirit will move in every heart in this church. You will change the lives of your people. Too long we have been playing church. Too long we have been walking around and we're allowing the devil to to rob or steal our joy. But God, today we come on this Sabbath and we're crying out to you that you may have mercy upon your people once again. Father, I pray, dear Jesus, that you will bless our members here today. Father, you see those who are in need of a job. We pray that you will provide. We see those who have bills and they have more bills than they have money. They're so broke that they owe themselves money. But Father, we say in the word that the cattle upon a thousand hills belong to you. And we are your children. And David said, I was young but I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging bread. So God, today I pray, I pray, I pray that right now that you will deliver some of us are going through sickness in our lives. You know the maladies that we face. You know the different trials that we are going through. But Father, right now, burdens are lifted at Calvary. And Jesus is very near. So Father, come divinely close. Come divinely close and move in this church. We pray healing now. We pray deliverance now. We pray victory now in the mighty name of Jesus. And from of us, dear God, we are still bound by the addictions of life. The addictions that trip us up. The addictions that we feel as if we can't shake. But God, we know today that you are a way maker. We know that you're a miracle worker and you're a promise keeper. So, Father, right now I pray, God, that you will make a way in the lives of your people. Move the shackles. Break down every idol and cast down every foe. Father, have your way, we pray. And, Father, I pray for the leadership. I pray for every individual. We mentioned to you, Pastor Logan, once again, your servant. Your man of God. And I pray for his wife that you will strengthen her. You will give her courage. You will allow her to realize that this is only for a moment. But God, we long for the day when you shall come and put an end to all the maladies that we go through. We long for the day when you shall burst the eastern sky. We long for the day when you shall ride down the corridors of heaven. We long for the day when you shall come triumphant. Then we shall stand and sing the song, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty we are free at last. But until then, may you keep us faithful. Until then, may you give us the joy to carry on. Until the day when our eyes be old, that beautiful city, may you give us the courage. May you bless your men's servant as he bring the word today. Use him as you have never used him before. In Jesus' name, let God's people say, Amen and Amen.
I'll say a prayer every night. Whatever I do, I'll get it right. With no regrets, no guilt or shame this time. No, not this time. Once I surrender, I won't dare look back. Cause if I do, I'll get off track Move ahead in faith and patiently await your answer What will it be? Sight beyond what I see Do you know what's best for me? Prepare my mind
proud of you, CJ. Proud of you. I'm proud of all of our young people and allowing God to use them in ways that they've never been used before. It is now time for us to do the scripture reading, and I ask that you stand with me and turn your Bibles to 1 John chapter 1, starting at verse 7. And I will read this in your hearing. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make a liar. We make him a liar and his word is not in us. I have read, reading the hearing, and adding a blessing to God's word. In Jesus' name. The privilege is mine today to introduce our speaker to us. When God was looking for a man, He went all the way over to the United Kingdom. He found a man and hooked him up with the former Marilyn Fortnia Sinclair. His beautiful wife is sitting right here. Sister Marilyn, just stand and give the brethren a wave. Their union has bare four children, Rochelle, Nigel Jr., Karen, and Lauren. We're grateful for Pastor Nigel David, who matriculated at the Northern Caribbean University in Mandeville, Jamaica, in 1993 through 1994. He went over to New Bowl College in, back in England, and that's where he, he, he completed his degree there. He holds a bachelor's degree in pastoral studies with an MA in pastoral ministry, and he's a certified MRT counselor. Since entering ministry in the year 2000, he has served as the associate pastor for the Croydon Seventh-day Adventist Church in London and the senior pastor for the Stratford Ilford Stratford and Ilford churches in London, England. In 2005, Pastor David accepted a call to Seattle, Washington, where he serves at the, as senior pastor at the Breath of Life Seattle Church in Seattle, Washington. He then went on to be the senior pastor for the Berea Church in Boston, Massachusetts. Pastor has served as a hospice chaplain for Kaiser Hospital in Vallejo, California, and as an endorsed NAD chaplain of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Pastor David is currently serving as the pastor for the New Jerusalem Seventh-day Adventist Church in East St. Louis. Pastor David is my best friend in ministry. He's my boy. He's my brother. We cry together. We laugh together. And I'm grateful for him being a friend when you needed a friend. And there are only a few people in your life that you can call a friend. And you know your real friend when your back is against the wall and there is nobody else to turn to. So today I am really, really encouraged and really, really happy that I can invite my friend to stand in the pulpit today to share God's words to God's people at such a time as this. 
before Pastor David ascends to the pulpit. We will be blessed by our melodious, beautiful praise team as they lead us into praise and worship. I hope your hearts are ready as we get ready to lift our hearts through music. His favor 
be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 Let the redeemed of the Lord say amen. amen and amen and amen. We want to thank the praise team for taking us to the throne of grace and lifting us higher. Amen, church. I want to add my voice to your pastor um, and say that our prayers and our hearts go out to Pastor Logan at this time. And we just pray that God will move and do what only he can do. What do you say, church? I promised when I left California that I wouldn't be going out preaching for anybody. Hello, somebody. 
I think the only person that could get me to leave my pulpit to come to another pulpit is your pastor. And I don't say this lightly to boost any egos, but he really is my road dog, my homie, my, my ride or die friend. And I want to suggest to you today, if you have a real friend in your life, secure them, value them, cherish them, pray for them, and keep them close. Horville, I want you to know that you are blessed because you have a prolific preacher. I don't even know why he's invited me here. You have a powerful evangelist, but you also have a young man who's a visionary. Come on, somebody. <clears throat> There's not a day that doesn't go by that we don't speak. If I don't call him, he's going to call me. And most days when we speak, over the past two months, all he talks about is you. Amen, somebody. He's passionate about this church and excited about what God is going to do through him with you. And I'm excited for you, church. So do me a favor. I know he celebrated his birthday on Thursday. I won't tell you how young he is. But let's just put our hands together for what God is going to do through this young man and his family. <clears throat> We're thankful for his beautiful wife, Lily, and for his children and for his in-laws and for their gracious hospitality. At this time, I want you to stand to your feet real quick. I just want to read one verse of one passage of scripture to you. I want to read to you from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17. And the Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is what? Come on and talk to me, church. He is what? All things are passing away. That's the correct translation, not past. Passing. It's a process. Behold, all things are becoming new. As we get ready to pray, I want to talk to you on this subject matter on this afternoon. Lord, make me over. <clears throat> yeah. Lord, make me over. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed when I'm praying. I pray, God, that today the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight, our Lord, our strength, and our Redeemer. For Jesus' name and for his sake, let the people say, Amen, amen. You may be seated in the house of God. It was <clears throat> J. Alexander Wooten, the poet and author who once stated, <clears throat> live in the moment, but don't be led by the moment or the people who belong to it. Horville, I think it is safe to say with the evidence that has been placed before us in society, and church life, that the definition of being a Christian, Pastor Shane, has been drastically eroded away. And the things that have caused this erosion is misguided self-perceptions. And for this generation right now, they take their cue from hip-hop culture, reality TV, and the rise of postmodernism. Even as I'm preaching to you right now, relationships between males and females have hit an all-time low. Because men complain that they're sick and tired of females who are nothing but gold diggers because they ain't messing with no broke. I can't say that word in church. And women have fired back. Women have fired back. No, I don't want no scrub. A scrub is a guy who can't get no love from me. I know you don't know what I'm talking about. Hanging out the passenger side of his best friend ride, trying to holler at me. No, I don't want your number. No, I won't give you mine. No, I don't want to meet you nowhere. No, I don't want none of your time. 
and to further complicate life and living is the fact that the slave mentality is still prevalent within our psyche, even if we will not admit it or not. But church, ultimately, humanity has truly been redefined by the entrance of sin and the effects of sin has left on us in our pursuit for happiness. Whether we believe it or not, the devil has tried and is still trying to erode every trace of God in man so that the family, society, and church will be decimated. Where are the young women on today? When your girlfriends keep using their bodies to get what they want, when they want, not caring that not only is it shady, but it looks tacky. Where are the young men today when uh, women are at home fending for themselves and their child because you left her high and dry? She was good enough to sleep with, but not good enough to be with. Where are the young men, Pastor Shane, when the streets are being infiltrated with crack, cocaine, marijuana, heroin, and every type of mind-altering drug? Where are the young women today out here in uh, Indianapolis when the video girls on TikTok and the gram are spending their time shaking what their mama gave them for likes and dollars on the fans only page? Where are the young men when the church become a social club and relationships have hit an all-time low because quite a few men have told every lie in the book for the sake of sex with no strings attached? Where are the young women when the pulpit has been used for inappropriate behavior from preachers who have forgotten, who has called them baby girl, you better check him before he uses his power and position to play you. And here comes the reality, Horville. Until we all decide to allow God to define us and shape us, we will continue to decline in every aspect of our lives until we destroy ourselves. Even deeper on this afternoon, who do you see when you look in the mirror of life? Because you can never comprehend who you are or what you are until you understand not how your pastor sees you, not how your elder sees you, not how your mama sees you, not how your father sees you, not how your homie sees you, but ultimately you got to understand how does God see you? Because the creator knows what he's created. And why he created. So that the true essence of of being a, a child lies in how God sees you. And even though you may not realize this. That no matter what you've gone through or may be going through right now. As a young person or older person in this life. There's one thing that is true today. If it had not been for the Lord on our side. Come on and help me preach this. Where would we be this afternoon? Because despite your struggles, come on in here, despite what the devil continues to throw at you, no, let me correct myself, despite what the devil throws at us, somehow we're still here in our right mind in this church in the good and bad of life. That means God is great and worthy to be praised. He could have left us in our mess. And if the truth be told, many of us sitting here should have been dead already or been in a mental institution. But he spared us. And if he did that, I can only conclude one thing today. If you're sitting in Horville in your right mind, that means God has not finished with you yet. And if he's not finished with me, then what you think about me or say about me doesn't matter because it's not over until God says it's over. I think I need to preach this to someone in church right now who's been written off by your family, written off by your friends, written off by society, and written off by the church. 
God has not finished with you yet. Do I have a witness in this church who in spite of your shortcomings and in spite of your mistakes, you understand that in God you still have hope. So if no one else will open their mouth, let me open my big black mouth all by myself and tell God, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You could have left me in my mess. Thank you, Jesus. I deserved what I got. Thank you, Jesus. You're still willing to work with me. Thank you, Jesus. You're still merciful to me. Thank you, Jesus. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Do I have 10 people in this church who will lift their hands right now and open their mouth? And if no one on your row will shout, you will shout all by yourself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, Hovel, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I promised I'd behave myself and act right. I'm sorry, church. Sit down, sit down. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, stay with me. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. You still with me, Hoville? All things are passing away. Behold, all things are becoming new. Today, for the next few moments, I want to work from this concept and spiritual understanding. Listen, young people, no matter who you are or what you've done, Jesus Christ can change you if you allow him to. Okay, let me say it again, because that was a shout right there. No matter who you are or what you've done, Jesus Christ can change us if we allow him to. Point number one, real quick. We need a makeover. The text says, if any man be in Christ, suggesting there are those who are not or once were not in him. And this then, Pastor Shane, becomes the fundamental principle concerning humanity and our position in life. What does someone look like who's not in Christ? It is most unhappy to be in position, in a position to be without Christ. It is inconvenient to be without money. Hello, somebody. It is miserable to be without health. It is deplorable to be without a friend. But it is wretched to be without reputation, but to be without Jesus Christ is the worst lack in the world. McLaren, the theologian, in his exposition of this passage, makes it abundantly clear. Without Jesus Christ, generation after generation naturally goes downhill because we already have a natural inclination to do wrong. Therefore, we are, when we are not in Christ, our judgment and actions can be deeply misguided and non-productive within the sphere of being the next generation that God can count on. And the truth of this word is, you will not always be young, come on in here, on sooner or later, you will have to face life and the reality that life throws at you. Paul then addressing God's ability to transform the human mind and behavior opens the discussion by helping us realize that transformation is a partnership between us and God. We must first accept that all of us are messed up. Come on in here, Orville, from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. And if the truth be told, some of us sitting here right now are a hot mess. So in this partnership, we must recognize that in our lives, listen to me, in our spiritual walk, we need divine intervention and we got to learn how to yield to God's spirit. God never intended us to be selfish, proud, 
arrogant, lazy, disrespectful, disingenuous, or dishonest. These are traits of the devil and all who are connected to him. However, within all of us lies a connection to God that we cannot deny or avoid. Can I push you a little deeper today, Horville? Young men, young women, do not get it twisted. As much as you want the bag and all of that stuff that you think is important in life, the Bible says that it was God that breathed into Adam's nostrils and he became a living soul. Okay, you all ain't feeling me in here. It was not Jay-Z. Come on and help me preach. It wasn't money bag, yo. It wasn't little baby. It wasn't young thug. It wasn't Migos. It wasn't 21 Savage. It wasn't Kodak Black. It wasn't little Dirk or the baby. It was God and God alone. And can I preach this part? I think somebody missed this deep reality. It is God's spirit that is within us. And whether you do good or do bad, you couldn't function without the spirit of God. Yet still, even though we move and live with his breath, we must choose to submit and then step aside and allow him to lead. Let me address the men, the young men, and the men in general. And don't worry, ladies, I'm coming back for you in a hot minute. Amen, somebody. Here lies one of the problems we're facing in the church and society. Too many men right now are messed up because we refuse to submit our manly ways to God. Not realizing the more that we try to live without God, the more carnal we become. This is then reflected in the home. Come on in here, Hoville. Transfers itself into society and then shows up in church. Can I preach this to some of the men in the house today? Especially our young men. We are messed up. Let me put it a little deeper. It's about time that we learn to tell the truth about who we are and what we are. We've tried to function by our own rules and by our own demonic definition of manhood. And look what's happened. Tell the truth, church. Look at how many men have treated the opposite sex, forgetting that what you did to someone else's daughter might come back and haunt your baby girl. Tell the truth, Horville. Look at some of our marriages. Not only are they toxic, but there's no trace of God left. And then you wonder why your sons call young ladies out of their name. They learnt it from you. Tell the truth. Look at not all, but some of our young men, even in the church, when they're out in the streets, trousers down by their ankles, won't take a bath or take a shower, refusing to go to work, don't want to go to college, but then have the nerve to look at you and tell you, you better respect me. Tell the truth, Orville. Look at the church and how the older men are steeped in their ways and refuse to admit as wholly as they try to act on Sabbath in church that more than one or two of them have some baby mamas in the closet too. Help me, Jesus. Tell the truth. Too many men want to try and act tough and hard all the time but I don't care how tough you are the truth is even when no one is looking we cry too some of us come to church and try to fake it to make it there have been some sabbaths when us as men have wanted to scream out in the sanctuary God have mercy upon me according to your tender mercies help me Jesus before I lose my mind tell the truth Many of our young ladies have lost their way because they're yet to understand it's not just what you have on the outside, but what you have on the inside. Tell the truth. Some of you have allowed yourself to be disrespected because not only do you allow men to call you a female dog, but you all call each other the same thing. Tell the 
truth in here, Hoville. Instead of having your own girls, baby girl, and your own ambitions, you expect a man to do for you what you're not willing to do for yourself. But baby girl, you better learn real quick. A man will never respect you if you only come with nails and heels and a gold digger mentality. Tell the truth and help me, somebody. Stop sleeping around, young lady, to find love and relevance. If he won't put a ring on it, come on and help me preach, then he can't have any on it. And furthermore, Pastor Shane, my mama told me when I was growing up, who buys the cow when the milk is free? If we've not accepted this reality, then we need to wake up today and take another look in the mirror of God's word and be honest enough to see that what we need is to be in Christ. In other words, listen somebody, you got to let him in and watch him work. It doesn't matter who you are, but what you can become, that's the real issue. For if any man being Christ, he is a new creature, same building, yes, sir. but he's had a makeover. Yes, you got to help me, Horville. I'm about to lose my mind in this church. You're still not feeling me. I love to ride motorcycles. Please don't judge me because some of you all love KFC. It's just that one may kill you quicker than the other. Lily. On May 2013, I was pastoring in Boston, riding on my Kawasaki ZX-10 1000. Some lady flew through a red light, hit me, sent me flying through the air, tore up my hip. My bike was a wreck, but thank God I'm still here. I brought the bike back, Pastor Shane, from the insurance. I salvaged and gave it to a person. Mm -mm -mm who specialized in restoring bikes. Oh, you all don't know where I'm going. <clears throat> he stripped it down to the frame and did a complete overhaul. When I finally brought the bike back on the road, people were like, man, we love your new bike. Same bike, but completely made over. I couldn't believe it, Marilyn. When I rode it, it handled better, it looked new, it was faster. In my hands, the bike would have remained tore up from the floor up, but in the hands of the man who specializes in making bikes over, he made it brand new. Oh, come on, Horville. Come in here, somebody. Somebody sitting here right now and saying, but pastor, you don't understand. I've tried self-help books. I've listened to Umar Johnson. I've listened to the late Kevin Samuels. I've, I've tried Oprah and Dr. Phil, but nothing has changed. But today, if you would place yourself in the right hands, he can make you over. And when he makes you over, trust me, you will look brand new. Lord, make me over because I'm tired of being the devil's plaything. Lord, make me over because I want to live right. Lord, make me over because I'm a mess, Jesus, and I need your help. Lord, make me over. I need you to come into my heart and clean my mind and clean my soul and wash my hands so that I can be a new person. Is there anybody here who needs God to make you over right now? It's not your homies who's in trouble. It's not your girlfriend. It's not your mama. It's not your papa. But it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I don't need your help tomorrow. I don't need your help next week. I need your help right now so you can change my life. Okay, okay. Point number two, point number two, I promise I'm not going to be long. Point number two, that was then, this is now. This is now. Oh, pastor, you, 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 you played me and you tricked me because you told me before I came here that this church was a shouting church. Let me try it again. 
that I'm, I'm preaching to somebody in here, listen, who's messed up. Everybody knows your business. Judge you for what you've done, but you want to change. That was then. This is now. Old things have passed away. Listen, listen, listen. Guilt. Everybody shout out guilt. Guilt is one of the most powerful emotions within a person's consciousness that shapes one's personality and how one functions in every aspect of your life. Jesus. Guilt governs our behavior and colors the way we perceive ourselves and slants our outlook on the world and even the church. And this is the internal as well as external. First, there is the guilt of how we react to our mistakes. Then there's also the guilt of how others see us and judge us and talk about us because they have some tea on us and they're willing to spill it, especially when they don't like us. When God makes us over, the slate is clean. Dana, I'm just preaching to you. It's just me and you. But we have a tendency, especially in church, to want to be all up in someone else's Kool-Aid and then turn around and play judge and jury like butter couldn't melt in our mouths. So while God can clean us up and change us, because of our desire for approval from others who are no better than we are, because all have sinned, we find it hard to accept that it's over because key people keep judging us. Because who the sun sets free, or oh, you all ain't saying nothing in here, but our wicked and so-called church family will not forget it when we've messed up. So now we have so many young people who have left the church. Because we would rather throw them out for their sinful behavior instead of pointing them to the one who can handle their sins. Can I preach this in here to somebody? When God says it's over, it's over. He wants us to put the past behind us. Listen, there's a difference between earning the trust of those we have hurt and paying penance for things we cannot change. Stop trying to prove to God that you are not who others have labeled you to be. You don't need to prove that to God because his blood reaches to the highest mountain. And flows to the lowest valley. In other words, Horville, trust God that not only has he forgiven you, but he can change you. It's a process. He can handle it no matter how bad it is. Because we're sinned in a pound. Much more grace. We must live for God. And the rest he will handle and take care of. And I wish I had about 15 people in Horville Church who would accept by faith that Jesus can give you a clean slate. And when you walk out of church today, you know all things have passed away. Stop living in the past. Do not let the past define you. If God be for you, that's why I can say to all those who want to hold up my past as a measurement of my future. That was then. This is now. Don't confuse my past with my future. Because God said, old things are passing away. That was then, Horville. I know I used to party until the break of dawn, drinking Hennessy and drinking Ciroc and drinking Crown Royal until I nearly lost my rind. Oh, you don't know what I'm talking about. But this is now, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. That was.
was then Hoville. I had no respect for the opposite sex, looking for trouble in all the wrong places. But this is now. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. That was then Hoville. I was messed up trying to be a thug, selling drugs, making paper, living that lavish life. But this is now. I would rather have Jesus than silver and gold. That was then Hoville. I used to carry a nine millimeter Glock. I was always in the middle of some trouble. Two of my crew were gunned down and killed on the spot. It could have been me. It should have been me. This is now. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because thou art with me. That was then Hoville. I was messed up on crack, gang banging, suicidal, sent to prison, lost it all. Church folk said he's no good, but this is now who the sun sets free is free indeed. Then I had no spiritual fortitude or staying power, but now. He's the source of my strength and the strength of my life. Then I was sinking deep in sin, far from the blissful shore. Now on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Then the enemy had me backed up in a corner. But now God fights my battles and breaks every chain. Then what you said about me used to bother me. I used to get so mad. I wanted to slap the taste out of your mouth. But now he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Then I used to sit in church and wouldn't give God praise. But now I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Can I get 15 people? I'll add myself and make 16 who will throw up their hands and give God praise right now. Now it is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Now I love the Lord. He heard my cry. Now I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. Now the joy of the Lord is my strength. Now every day with Jesus is sweeter. It's better. It's richer. It's higher. It's deeper. It's sweeter than the day before. Say yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Okay. Okay. Hovel, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Point number three, and I'm done. I'm going to sit down. Point number three. Point number three. Point number three. I'm brand new. I'm brand new. Listen. It says here, Behold, all things have become new or becoming new. Young people, I need you to listen to this because this is for you. One of the greatest challenges that our young people face today is the misuse of power. People of color, especially our young men, are living in poverty around the world. <clears throat> Pastor Shane, and for every measure of life, outcomes, incomes, education, incarceration, young men of color are less likely to reach their full potential in life and be able to contribute to society in a positive way. They suffer disproportionately 
from the social ills of gangs, addiction, crime, violence, accidental deaths, and increasingly in the black community, mental health issues. <clears throat> While they are held accountable as individuals, listen church, for making poor choices, the institutions intended to improve their outcomes, the public education system, the private sector, sector job market, the juvenile justice system, and a myriad of public and private health and human service programs have done a terrible job. It's not surprising then, Dane, that inside and outside of the church, many young people feel isolated because they have been left on the scrap heap of life to make it alone. As a result, Hoville, we, have, we now have a generation who seem devoid of accountability and will cancel you in a hot second. But maybe, maybe they are simply mirroring how society and church treats them. Are oh, you still not feeling me? You may not understand the depth of what I've just shared, but our young people live in a context where they crave power because society and church have left them powerless. So now they think that power comes, you've got to follow me, from having certain things that are perceived as power symbols. Cars, Hello, somebody. Clothes and money. Because if you can buy it, then you can own it. And if you own it, you have power over it. <clears throat> but they and us are yet to learn that owning things and people are very much temporal. You better help me preach this in here. Because today, Pastor Shane, you can have it all, but tomorrow you can lose it all. So now, power does not lie in possessions. Help me preach, Orville. But true power lies in the state of your mind. Because whatever or whoever has your mind controls your life. I'm about to lose it in this church. That's why we have a saying in the Caribbean, Pastor Shane, about people who suddenly gain some type of position or power or financial gain. We say they are behaving brand new. They begin to confuse who they are and what they have. And the truth is too many of us are guilty of this mentality, young and old. Brand new. Because your credit score went up. You went out and brought a new ride with rims you cannot afford. Brand new. Because you received a promotion at work and now you're making good money. You start shopping for designer labels, which is okay. But don't you ever confuse what you wear with who you are. Brand new. Because they voted you into leadership position in church. Now you're so full of yourself. You walk around the church like CSI Horville. Brand new. Because you graduated with honors from university. Now no one cannot even have a normal conversation with you. Because you are using words that not even you understand. Brand new because you've confused the acquisition of things and titles with who you really are. But life is not about stuff. Jesus. Life is about you. I'm nearly done, I promise. So Paul steps in and gives a deep concept. He says, behold, all things are becoming new. Because newness, listen, is not external. 
is internal. God wants to change the way we think. Come on, Hoville. Which in turn will direct what we do. He not only wants to give us a clean heart and throw out our past mistakes in the sea of forgetfulness, but he also wants to renew our minds so that all things will become new. In other words, he wants us to have a new perspective. A person who follows the will of God and has the power of the Holy Spirit flowing through their psyche is a dangerous spiritual weapon. Because too many of us, our young people and some older folk have been ridden off and you've been let down and sometimes you've let yourself down by making bad choices and hanging with the wrong people. But I today want to declare by the authority of God's word that despite our mess and despite our shortcomings, we can trust God because he can forgive and heal and restore this broken vessel. Don't you understand what I'm trying to preach? The potter wants to put us back together again. And maybe you're sitting in church and the devil's whispering in your ear that no good liar, that you are washed up. But contrary to popular opinion, I stopped by here from East St. Louis to tell you, God has not finished with you yet. We can trust him because he's a God of his word. How many people know he means what he says and says what he means? We can trust him because he still has our back. We can trust him, Horville, because he's a very present help in the time of need. We can trust him. I've seen him make a way when no way can be found. We can trust him because he keeps on looking out for us. We can trust him because he saw the best in us when I couldn't see the best in myself. Can I get somebody to help me close this sermon? I found a new life. I found a new life. If anyone asks me, Pastor David, what's the matter with you? I can tell him today, I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized, Jesus is mine, I've found a new life. Can I get 15 people in Horville Church who will stand up on their feet, put their hand on their hip and look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, take a look at me now. I feel brand new. Take a look at me now. I'm walking by faith and not by sight. Take a look at me now. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Take a look at me now. I got my mind made up and I won't turn back. Take a look at me now. There's something about the name of Jesus. Take a look at me now. When I think about the goodness of Jesus, like crisscross, he makes me want to jump. Take a look at me now. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Take a look at me now. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you feel. If you won't praise him, I'll praise him all by myself. Can I get 20 people who will lift their hands and begin to praise God right now? Praise him for his mercy. Praise him for his grace. Praise him for his love. Let everything that has breath wave something. Shout something, clap something, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Say yeah, 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 yeah. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul, my soul, my soul says hallelujah.
thank you Jesus he picked me up from the miry clay he planted my feet on the king's highway and that's the reason I sing and I shout when I was down 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 he lifted me up say yeah So listen, listen, listen. Shh. I want to make this appeal to you real quick. Take your seat for a second. Take your seat for a second. I want you to listen to me real carefully. Dane, just hold the music one second. I want them to hear this. Uh, and I'm not going to be long, I promise. So about 10 guys were living in California, in LA. And they are... They've been saving their money for a whole year because they wanted to go to New York to stay in the Waldorf Astoria in Manhattan in the penthouse suite on the 100th floor. The year went by, the day came. Man, they flew into New York first class and they were excited. They get to the Waldorf Astoria, get to the reception, and the receptionist has a kind of sad look on her face. She says, listen, we're so sorry to tell you the elevator is not working. So the leader for the group said, listen, we come too far to turn back now. We're going to leave our luggage and we're going to walk all the way up. Can you see them, Hoville? They take off 10th floor, 20th floor, 30th floor, 40th. By the time they got to the 50th floor, a run had changed to like a jog. 55, 60. Now they out of breath, getting cramps. They can hardly walk. A jog has become to a walk and a walk is now a crawl. 65, 70. Come on, Horville. 7580. Man, praise team, they on their hands and knees. They got 20 more flights to go. Can you see them, Hoville? 85, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. Come on and say amen, church. They made it. They get to the door excited. And the leader for the group says, And he turns and he says, you got the key, right? The guy behind says, I don't have the key. You have the key. They start panicking with each other. 
They left the reception, but didn't have the door key. Mm. This is all I've been trying to preach today, somebody. You mean to tell me that we're going to navigate through the hundred flights of life. Devil and demons and people we don't like and people who don't like us. Navigate all of that to get to heaven's gate. And you don't have no key because you have no Jesus. And when you're ready to go in, he looks at you and says to you, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I don't know you. And you're like, what are you talking about? I was at Hallville every Sabbath. I returned my tithe. I'm a, I was even a vegan and I didn't like it. Your only entrance to heaven is Jesus Christ as your personal savior. I know this is going to blow you away. Your entrance is not doctrine. Yeah, your entrance is not all the things we like to brag about that make us the remnant. Your only access to heaven is Jesus Christ. So listen, I'm done. Here's my appeal. As the pray team can, praise team continue to sing this song and they in place, if there's anybody in here and don't you dare look at your neighbor because let me tell you something, people cannot save you. Stop hanging your salvation on what people know about you and what they think about you. You should have heard what they said about me when I got locked up. They kissed my mom and said, oh, we're so sorry. Your son's gone to prison. And as soon as they turned, they said, serves that Negro right. A crackhead. A gangbanger. But what they didn't know, it's not over. And Is there anyone in here today who needs a makeover in their life? I want you to come to the altar. I want to pray with you. I'm not going to be long. Come on, you know what you need to come for. Come come. You need a makeover in your life. Come to this altar right now. So listen, listen, listen. Listen, shh, listen, listen. There's nothing you have done and nothing you are doing that God cannot handle. I don't care how dark it is, the thing you're struggling with. God can handle it. That's biblical. Romans 5.20 Where sin did abound Come on and help me Much more grace 21st century interpretation When we go low God goes lower Thank you Lord Thank you Jesus So if you're sitting in this sanctuary today And you need God to make over Some things that are going on in your life you need to come to this altar. And I don't care who knows what about you. That doesn't matter today. Your salvation is locked into Jesus Christ. It's what he thinks that matters. So you come to this altar. 
And if the devil's whispering in your ear telling you, don't you dare come to the altar because you know what you do. You know what you like and how you like it. You tell him in the name of Jesus, you're a liar. I'm still going to come with my lies and my mess and my brokenness and my issues and my hurt and my suicidal tendencies. I'm coming because no one else can help me. Hallville, if I can deposit anything into your spirit today before we close this service, I want you to never forget this. If God be for you, you all don't believe it. Let me try again. If God be for you, who can be against you? Okay, I've got to do this. Put your hand on your chest and say it with me. If God be for me, who can be against me? The next time you feel like you're going to lose your mind, you put your hand on your chest and you say to yourself, if God be for me, do I have any real folk in Hoville Church? Do I have anyone in here who some days you feel like you're going to lose your mind? But if God be for me, Jesus, who can be against me? Pastor Shane, can you pray for us? Father in heaven, thank you for showing up in this church today. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Father, the devil has beat us up. Many of us will believe the lies of the enemy. You will always be that good for nothing and nothing good. But thank you, dear Jesus, because we are reminded today that if God be for us, who can be against us? So, Father, where we are standing, where we are sitting, we are standing with boldness today, believing that victory is ours. Because, God, you are on our side and we are already more conquerors because of him who love us. So, Father, today you have seen every individual in this church. You have seen the tears rolling down our faces. You have sat and we have listened. But thank be to God for the reminder today that Jesus said you have sent your only son, Jesus, to die in our stead. And thank God for your grace and your mercy. So reach in the hearts of your people today. Help them, dear God, to realize and to see that there's still a powerful God that can heal. There's still a powerful God that can change. There's still a God that can rescue the hearts of your people today. Oh God, we are grateful, dear Jesus, for the words. We're thankful, dear God, for your manservant. We're praying, dear Jesus, that as we leave this place, that we'll never leave this place feeling as if that we have lost. But help us dear Jesus to leave this place believing that we are overcomers. Father we praise you for who you are. We glorify you for who you are. We magnify you for who you are. And for everyone in the sounding of my voice, I want you to give God thanks for rolling it back, for taking it away. Give God thanks and thank him where you are because the devil, what the devil meant for evil, you have counted it for good. Thank him that he has saved your soul. Thank him that he has rescued you from the pit of hell. Thank him that because any man that God has set free is free in Indeed. So put your hands and your voices together. Shout and let the devil know he has lost the battle. I am victorious. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah! 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 and then we give a liberal offering. At this time, I'm going to call on the deacons to come forward. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And he says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will pour you out a blessing, and there shall not be room enough to receive it. Praise God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise 
redeem all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly homes. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Father God, we offer our tithes and our offerings to you. Father God, use them now to finish your work. May souls be won. May souls be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And we ask you to please remain standing as we get ready for the benediction. The benediction is a good saying that we leave you with. It's our prayer. It's our blessing. It's what we as leaders wish for each of you. Today's benediction comes from the book of 2 Corinthians, and it says, Now to God's people, may the grace of our Lord the love of Jesus Christ, and may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen.